Today I'm going to be doing some broadhead testing on the three different types of three blade one and one eighth inch broadheads that Bishop Archery makes. They came out originally with the first one in S7 tool steel. This is called the Bishop Archery Holy Trinity. S7 tool steel is the most uh, impact resistant tool seal of any broadhead on the market today. And then they came out with uh, the second line here that they call their Bridgeport line. And same exact specs. All these have the exact same exact specs, same weight. They're all 125 grain. In this case, they fly exactly the same. But this one, the Bridgeport one, the middle one, is made out of 41L40 tool steel, which is actually the second most impact resistant uh, steel of any broadhead on the market today. And then the third is their newer Pipeline series. And this is made out of a a uh, really unique stainless steel that they've come up with. Their metallurgists have worked on. I'm looking forward to testing it out. It's uh, supposedly stronger and more impact resistant than any other stainless steel on the market, even more than SV30 and any other stainless steel broadhead on the market. And so I'm going to test all three of these. You may have seen an earlier test I did on the Bishop S7 uh, here in the Holy Trinity, where I put it through wood, frozen meat, and bone, uh, and a steel flat bar. But I have a bunch more stuff that I'm going to be putting them through, and I'm going to put uh, these other ones through as well and see the difference. There's a significant difference in price between them. Uh, this one, the pipeline, is kind of more competitive with most other uh, three blade heads on the market. But then the bridge port is a step uh, more expensive than that. The, uh, the Bishop in the S7 is more expensive than that. So let's see how they perform on these different mediums. First, let's test the Bishop S7 tool steel. Okay, now we're going to shoot the bridge port. Third and finally, we're going to shoot the pipeline. And I should note there's a Reinhardt target behind all these. That's what's stopping the impact. Okay, let's go dig them out and see what happens. Uh, all of them penetrated extremely well, as could be imagined. It's not a very, very big challenge. Just wanted to see how the edges held up, and all of them held up extremely well. They all still bite into my fingernail. I really can't tell any difference in, uh, in the three upon that first test. So now let's, uh, let's test them out a bit more. Okay, now we're going to put them through this steel plate. This is 22 gauge sheet metal. First, the Bishop S7. Now the bridge port. And now the pipeline. So all three of them held up really well against the steel plate. And I hadn't touched them up after the half inch plywood, but they all held up really well. They still bite now. For comparison's sake, I'm going to shoot a couple other popular broadheads through the same medium, through the wood and through the steel plate, and then uh, later on through some more testing. But uh, this is a popular one from Walmart. They were on sale, so I thought I'd test them out. It's an Allen. And then uh, this is a popular one from Muzzy, the Trocar. Let's see what happens with those. So here we are shooting at the half-inch plywood again. And first we're going to go with the uh, Muzzy Trocar. And now the Allen. Okay, so here are the Muzzy, Trocar, and the Allen, both 125 grain after passing through the half inch plywood. The tips of both are in good shape. The Allen, the one blade is like really jacked up. I don't know if you can see that. It's jacked up. Why you don't shoot a six dollar broadhead? Six dollar pack of three, two dollar broadhead. Uh, the Muzzy Trocar held up really well, and uh, the most of the blades still are uh, they, they shave nail. There's some nicks in the blades. The tip is in perfect condition, well, pretty perfect, and uh, the blades up toward the where the initial impact of the blades are, there's some nicks in there, but uh, but overall they held up relatively well. Okay, so now we're going to shoot these two broadheads, the Muzzy Trocar first, and then the Allen into this 22 gauge sheet metal. 
Okay, so after shooting the uh, the muzzy and the Allen through the 22 gauge metal plate, this is uh, what we came up with with the muzzy. The tip is actually in good shape. The blades, not so much. I don't know if you can see it there, but they're uh, they're marred beyond resharpening. All three of them are really dinged up. And then the uh, the washer at the base, that's part of the broadhead, is broken as well in one place. So not bad. Um, it made it through, but it's it's not usable. I, uh, I was going to say you could replace the blades, which you could. You just need a new washer at the bottom, and then uh, you'd probably be good to go. Okay, the uh, the Allen, on the other hand, did not fare so well. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't fly good, and it, the tip is actually broken off, and each of the blades broke off. So it just goes to show you, with both of these popular heads, this, you know, a cheapie, admittedly, this, you know, a top of the line popular head, um, the tests, even just as easy as we've put them through so far, are no joke. And so to see all three of those bishops come through pretty much unmarred is pretty impressive. Now I'm going to test these heads through a center block. First, we're going to go with a bishop. Now we'll go with the bishop. Bridgeport. Now we're going to go with the pipeline. And finally, the muzzy trail car. Well, that was a really interesting test here through the cinder block. So, uh, as you can see from the tests, all of them it hit the block. The, uh, the muzzy bounced off, and it had the most significant damage by far. You can see. It's, uh, it's, its blades were already destroyed from the earlier test, just through the 22 gauge steel plate, but now we're, the tip was completely broken off. I mean, it's like a, a field tip now. Then each of the other three heads that we're really testing here, the muzzy was just our control, uh, the bishop, the bridgeport, and the pipeline, holy trinities, all performed extremely well. And none of these heads were resharpened in between shots. And uh, honestly, there's just very little difference between any of them. Now I'm down to two arrows. I can only afford six arrows for the testing, and four of them were already destroyed. So now I'm down to these final two. But it works out well, because the whole purpose of this video and this test was to test all three models of the Bishop Holy Trinity. It's really unique. I don't know of another company that does this. It has three uh, of the exact same spec broadheads, but in different steel and therefore different pricing. So it's kind of interesting to test them head to head, literally. And I've already uh, shot them through wood. I shot them through 22 gauge metal plate, shot them into a concrete cinder block. And now I'm going to shoot these final two into uh, one eighth inch steel flat bar. And I'm not going to shoot the Bishop in S7. I already shot one in a previous video into the one eighth inch steel flat bar and it performed extremely well. Matter of fact, I just resharpened that and went on to kill a bunch of animals with it in Texas, some hogs and axis deer and stuff like that. It performed really well and it actually poked through the one eighth inch steel flat bar. But now I'm going to see what happens with the Bishop Bridgeport in 41L40 and the Bishop Pipeline in their proprietary stainless steel. So let's see what happens in these final two heads. And I might note, I have not resharpened or touched up these heads since going through all the different mediums that we've done in the test so far. So they're pretty banged up a bit, but let's see how they hold up to the steel flat bar. First, let's go with the Bridgeport model. Now let's go with Pipeline. Okay, so that was a really cool crescendo to these tests. Check out this flat bar. I mean, I'm amazed of the, the force of impact, even with these really light arrows, relatively light, that they would put such a dent in this 1 8 inch flat bar. And then both of them penetrated actually all the way through. I don't know if you can tell that went all the way through, but penetrated all the way through the flat bar. 
which is quite impressive. I mean, they left, they left a nice little triangular hole in that, which uh, other heads have not been able to do. So look at the heads themselves. I mean, I'm really impressed. These heads have gone through, like you know, the, the half-inch plywood, and then the, the 22 gauge metal plate, and then into the cinder block, and now they've gone smack dab into a 1 8 inch flat bar of steel. And they have held up extremely well. I mean, so here's our three heads after all the testing that they've gone through. And I gotta say, I am really impressed with what they've done. I'm a bit surprised. I'm especially surprised with the pipeline, this one on the end here, in the proprietary stainless steel. They thought they had something really good in that new, uh, new steel they've been able to do. And sure enough, it proved out. It's really important to understand for a broadhead a couple things here. First of all, you kind of go, what is this? What does any of this matter? I mean, why are we putting it through steel and thick wood and, and concrete and stuff like that? What's the point? I mean, that's not an animal. We don't hunt those things. And yeah, that's true. You, you can take, you can even take that Allen that just destroyed and you can shoot that into an animal. And there's no doubt there's been so many kills with a lot of heads that are a lot less durable than this, no doubt. But you got to ask yourself, what, what do you really want in a broadhead? I want one that gives me the benefit of the doubt. I want one that I trust is not going to fail no matter what. And so when I'm, especially when I'm hunting a big animal, when I'm going after an elk or a moose or a big hog or maybe over in Africa, where you've planned a lot and you've invested a lot into this hunt, you've practiced a lot, you do not want a broadhead that's going to dull up or break in half or lose a blade or anything like that. And so that's what these heads show. And then the other reason it's really important is you can take a head out of the box, out of the, uh, the box that comes in the packaging, and have it just shave hair like even that Allen did and like the Muzzy Trocar did. And that's awesome. But it's not how sharp it is as soon as it impacts the animal that matters, but how sharp it is as it goes through the animal that matters, how sharp it is when it comes out of the animal. Some people say, oh, I don't care if my broadhead gets destroyed as long as it kills the animal. Yeah, well, eventually you're going to have an animal that doesn't die because the broadhead was destroyed. And when your blades are getting all nicked up, they are not cutting tissue effectively all the way through. So you want a head that's not just sharp upon impact, but that's sharp all the way through that impact, through the tough hide, through the muscle, uh, all the different forms of tissue, the, the tendons, the ligaments, the cartilage, even through bone. You want one that is going to keep penetrating extremely well all the way through, especially if it's a big animal where depth of penetration makes a significant difference. So that's what these heads show and prove their worth on, is that they're able to take the toughest that there is, and do extremely well through it. And again, this pipeline is uh, is particularly impressive because it's about half the price of the S7. What you have with the Bishop, from all my experience and all my testing of broadheads, and I still shoot a lot of different types of broadheads based on the, the, the need I have and the conditions and what animals I'm going after and stuff. I don't just have a single brand loyalty. But what you have here is you have the best steel hardened in the strongest way and you have them CNC machined in this holy trinity and, and their two blades as well. And then you have them in a geometric design that just makes them extremely strong. So and they do all that also in a really short design in these holy trinities which allows them to fly really well. You can see another one of my videos where I test them out to long range. Anyway, this has been a really cool test. I hope it's helpful to you to understand broadheads and understand these three lines of bishops a little.